There are so many factors involved when analyzing a paint color. I would know, I'm the paint guy. How light or dark it is, what are the undertones involved? But one of my favorite pieces of information to look at is the LRV of a color. This is an acronym that represents the light reflectance value, telling us how much light a color reflects, therefore how bright it appears in practical use. Pretty important stuff, especially if you're trying to figure out how light or dark something is. But what if I told you there's another acronym that gives us even more information about the color while at the same time not really telling us much? When it comes to paint colors, the RGB value is both the most useful and useless information for any given paint color, but it's definitely worth knowing about, so let's get into why. So like we discussed earlier, the LRV tells us how light or dark a color appears, while the RGB value gives us detailed information about the color itself. RGB values are essentially numbers that correlate to the amount of red, green, and blue in any particular color, represented with three separate values for each color hue, and each of these values can range from zero to 255. This means that the maximum number of different colors that can be produced in the entire RGB spectrum is over 16 million, which is a ton of colors, especially if you think about major paint companies, we're usually dealing with maybe a couple thousand colors maximum. So what I want to do to help illustrate all of this is go over to the Sherwin-Williams website to see an example. We load up favorite tan, which is a color, and we click on the details tab, we can find the RGB value down here, with red being 193, green being at 174, and blue being at 145. So you would notate this by writing 193, 174, 145, with those little commas in between. And what's really cool about this is you can put these numbers into any online color picker or color wheel, and favorite tan will pop up or at least the color that's being represented on the screen. This is an awesome way to quantify paint colors digitally. So one example of how you could do this is, let's say you loved favorite tan and you wanted to put it on your company's business card. All you would need to do is find out the RGB value, punch in those numbers in your color picker, and there you have it. Super useful stuff, right? Well, one of the first things that we really need to clarify here is how RGB values work. One thing you might notice when looking at a really light color or a really dark colors RGB values, there seems to be a bit of a trend. Really dark colors like tricorn black tend to have lower RGB values or values in general, and really light colors like high reflective white are the opposite. So we do see this correlation between lighter and brighter colors having higher numbers in their RGB readings. This can be useful in determining brightness as well because if your paint color has three numbers that are in the low to mid 200s, you're probably looking at some form of off-white in most cases. The question is, why is this? How can high reflective white be a combination of a ton of green and red and blue paint all mixed together? Well, here's the big reveal. We're not dealing with paint or physical pigment here. We're dealing with light. The red, green, and blue pigments found in paint colors are actually the three digital primary colors used to represent color on a screen, like your phone or your computer, not your walls. I'll give you some examples as to how mixing colored light differs considerably from mixing color and paint pigment. Instead of red and blue creating a rich, dark, deep purple, red and blue light in the RGB space would give you a really dynamic, vibrant magenta. Another funny thing is the way you produce a bright, pure yellow is to combine the most intense red and the brightest green. Even stranger is if you take pure red, pure blue, pure green, those three primary colors at their maximum vibrancy, their maximum purity, and you put them together, you're left with pure white. That's right, 255, 255, 255 is just white. If you did the same thing with red, green, and blue paint, you'll probably end up with a muddy brownie gray, <laughs> like most colors. It's interesting how accurate and quantifiable 
RGB values are when it comes to color, while at the same time being rather limited in practical use in the whole paint world that we live in. Mixing paint in the physical world at your local paint store is something entirely different compared to how a color is produced on a screen. This is one of the many reasons why you should take paint colors you see on your phone with a grain of salt, especially if you're overanalyzing these RGB numbers. You don't necessarily wanna look at two paint colors on your computer and say, well, this one has a bit lower blue in the RGB, which means it's probably warmer. There are just too many elements involved with paint color that you would just be better off trying it out in person. One handy little thing to remember though is if you're working with grays, those true gray colors will have a balanced RGB reading. So a darker gray may be represented by 100, 100, 100, and then an extremely light gray might sit around 200, 200, 200. So that's pretty interesting, right? You know you're getting a real gray if it's completely even all the way through. But if you know gray paint colors in real life, even the ones that are supposed to look completely neutral end up leaning one way or another, normally towards the cool side of things. But if you took one of these completely neutral grays, however, and then you raise or crank up the red in one of those colors, you might see that represented by a slight brown or rosy undertone. And then if you add green to that little bit of red in a balanced fashion, you'll start to see some more yellow, just based on how that colored light works. If you wanna know a little more nuance on RGB values, there's a fantastic article I stumbled upon from edx.org that I will link down below. But when it's all said and done, there are definitely takeaways you can get from reading up on these numbers when you're looking at paint colors. But still, the best thing to do is see these colors in person at your local paint store, ideally. Try not to rely solely on screen representations because your home will make colors look different. And also, a color on my phone screen is gonna look different than your phone screen, so. RGB values with digital colors are mega important and super useful, but for the most part, are kind of useless when you're trying to find the perfect shade of green for your living room. Another extremely important acronym to know is LRV, and you can learn all about it right over here. This is a piece of information that I always look for when I'm analyzing paint colors, so check out our explainer video on it. 